Now, some specifics as to uh, what he needs to do more from a personnel standpoint, right? Um, I think a big question mark is how is Blake Fisher going to take the Harry he stand coaching, right? Yeah. And- I mean, that wasn't really where I was going with it. Okay. Um, with that one, it was, I, I, and we have a super chat that kind of addresses that. Maybe we'll get to that afterwards. When I when I look at the important task for Blake Fisher, it's more about, you know, the task for Harry Heastand is, you've got to you, you look to you don't need stars on right. your offensive line. You give me five good players, and you're going to have a really good offensive line. We've said this before. Give me if you have two stars and three not good players, and they don't play well together, you're not going to have a great offensive line. You give me five really good players, no great players and they know how to play together, you're going to have a great offensive line. Sure. However, as we saw in 2015, as we saw in 2017, when you have five guys that play together and you have stars on your (laughs) team, you're going to be really good. That's when it gets to elite status. Yeah, and obviously, you know, Jarrett Patterson's been a really good player. Him getting to the next level is is, is important and all those kind of things. But Blake Fisher has a chance to be a star, like a genuine – star and and not like a really good player. Jarrett Patterson can be a really good player. Jarrett Patterson to me is never going to be a top 10 NFL draft pick. You're hoping he can be a first round guy, but sure. you know he he's more Robert Hainsey. He's more you know Liam Eikenberg right than he is Quentin Nelson. And that's kind of where I see Blake Fisher potentially being that kind of dominant player. Now do I expect him to be full go there in 2022? No, because he's a sophomore, right? Right. But right. He should take a jump, right? And and that's going to be the thing for Coach Eastan is is he's got to be sort of your pet project, in that like you have another le- a tackle and Joe Walt that you need to work on and get going. But like Joe's kind of already really technically advanced. You know, there's more you can build on there. But you no, know, Joe came to college knowing how to play, right. thanks to his dad. Yeah, that helps. That you helps. know, and and Blake has incredible skills and he's still learning the position and finding, you know, figuring out what buttons to push for him is going to be key. Now, to me, the reason I don't put the relationship into this category, because to me, that's more on Blake Fisher than it is on Harry. He I don't think that's a task for Blake Fisher or Harry. He That's a task for Blake Fisher. Look, it, it, it's pretty simple. Blake's going to have conversations with former players and they're going to tell him like, look, coach E. Stan is, is going to cuss you and get on you and, and all these kind of things. But you know, it'll be the advice that older players gave younger players all the time. Back in the day, I guarantee you we'll see the Martins and Quentin Nelson and those guys back on campus this summer. And they're going to have conversations with, with Blake Fisher. And it's going to be about, listen, here's how you, how you receive that coaching and turn it into something special. And that's going to be up to Blake to decide because Harry, he stands 63 years old. He is who he is. And his track record speaks for itself. Exactly. If you're not going to let yourself be coached by him, that's a you problem, not a him problem, in my opinion. And everybody's like, well, you know, he's got to change. For... No, 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 not on offensive line. I'm sorry. I'm going to put my foot down and say, you can baby a lot of other position groups. You can't baby offensive linemen. Not if you want to be a champion. And if Blake Fisher wants to be a star, if Blake Fisher wants to be an elite player, and I'm not saying he won't be receptive to that coaching. I'm not saying that at all. I think there's a lot of people concerned about it because there are certain perceptions yeah. about Blake Fisher as a player, that was interesting. which is fine. And, and again, I don't know enough about Blake Fisher to know if he will or won't take the coach he stands coaching. My point, however, is the track record speaks for itself. And if you allow yourself to be coached and pushed and challenged and, and, and you take that on a daily basis, doesn't mean you have to like it. We've right. said this before. Ronnie Stanley did not like being coached by Harry Heastan from a style standpoint, but Ronnie Stanley took the coaching. He applied the coaching, and it made him a top 10 NFL draft pick and an All-American. And you saw Ronnie uh, tweet yesterday when Harry when the announcement was made about Harry Heastan, Ronnie Stanley tweeted three goats, mm-hmm. right? Meaning, yeah, that's the man. But when he was here, did Ronnie Stanley like it? No. And – you look at Liam Eikenberg, he was someone who was actually kind of happy that Coach Eastan was gone. So what we were kind of told behind the scenes. Well, when when Liam Eikenberg was going into his final year, who did he turn to to work with him over the summer? Harry Eastan, because he grew up and matured and realized, I and Liam was said this, I didn't take enough of advantage of my time 
you know, basically he didn't say it specifically, but you know, you knew what he was talking about. Right. And so to me, if Blake Fisher's willing to take that hard coaching from coach he stand, he's going to realize this is going to make me a lot of money because I don't question Blake Fisher's work ethic. I mean, no one that has been at Notre Dame that has been around this young man. And from what I have seen has questioned that. Now there were people that questioned it before he got here because there are assumptions about kids that look like Blake Fisher because of the big body. And he had a little bit of baby fat on him and he's such a big kid. And you say, Oh, that guy's going to, you know, you have to, I, that guy's not going to necessarily be a great hard worker. People just make those assumptions about bigger kids like that. And that was like eliminated day one. Nobody questioned Blake Fisher's work ethic. If he can take the hard coaching, then that combination of his work ethic and talent with Harry Heastan's teaching ability, you've got a chance to have an absolute star. And it could start, it'll start to see it now because let's not forget Quentin Nelson as a sophomore was the 2015 season and he was really good, right? I mean, we saw it and he didn't play as a freshman. Blake at least got a game yeah, and a half under his belt, you know? And so he's going to have the whole spring. He's going to be healthier because fortunately for him and for Notre Dame, his injury happened so early that by the time they get into winter conditioning, he's he's healthy now. And by the time they get into spring, he's going to be full go. So I think that's a really, a really important piece to this conversation is you've got to get Blake Fisher playing like a star. And if you can do that, and I don't care if he's a left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard, I don't care. Just wherever he's going to play, right, right, he's got to be a star. I think that's that's the big thing for me. And, and it's, I'll tell you this, I've been told by a couple really good sources. So the people that were telling me that he wasn't wanting to get back into coaching, then the same were the same people that that which is why, how we were able to get it out first that he was looking to come back. Right. And at first it was, you know, some role. Then it was like, no, he wants to be the coach now. It was watching. I'm told it was watching Joe Alt late in the year and then watching Blake Fisher. And he was like, those kids can be special. And he mm-hmm. wanted to be he wanted to be the guy that so like it, with my tutelage, these kids can be special. And that's just the kid that he kids that he knows, you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he what he wants to, what he's thinking once he gets to see Rocco Spindler and Michael Carmody and some right. of these other guys, and maybe he didn't get to see as much, sure. or maybe or more. Because he probably didn't have access to right. practice right. and all that at the right. time. Which then takes us into our final key point for the offense.